We're gonna talk about a bunch of topics in this video. I think it'd be very helpful if you're trying to get into ships. Uh, we're gonna talk about how mods affect the speeds of ship. It works a lot different than people think. We're gonna talk about Falcon and Biston. The ship up here is amazing. And at the very end of the video, we're gonna talk about my frustrations with the ship's mode. Uh, why it's not a popular mode and what I would do to make it better. Arnold has an amazing video on that. I just saw that and I was actually sitting down to make this as like, man, you made the same video. I'm back in California. I miss Arnold and making videos with him. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And I have a feeling that we're going to do it again. But I got to tell you, I, I can't handle the weather, man. Last night here in California, I slept with my windows open. I'm driving around with my windows rolled down. I probably could be even wearing shorts right now. So I'm glad to be back here. Let's talk about Biston's U-Wing. This ship is just amazing. And it does so many good things for mirror matches because mirror matches come down to like speed versus speed in a lot of ways. But check this out. Bistin's U-Wing has 25% speed and additional whenever an enemy becomes target locked. Another random ally gains 35% turn meter and advantage for two turns. So that is very good. And plus, if you're using Biggs as a tank as opposed to Hound's Tooth, there's gonna be a lot of advantages, whatever target lock. We're gonna get lots of extra turn meter. And then also right here, whenever the U-Wing is active and ally scores a finishing blow, that ally gains 15% turn meter. If that ally is also Rebel Bistin U-Wing also gain that much turn meter, it just ramps up. And then you have the ability of inflicting target lock, so all of this happens. Now, the problem that I have with Biston's ship is that both Biston and the Scarif Rebel Pathfinder are not only horrible, horrible, horrible characters, they are really, really, really hard to gear up. And they are very Carbonti heavy. And we're going to talk about this more at the end of the video, but I'm just going to show gameplay of how good this combo is. And I think there's a couple different figurations that I'm seeing people use. One is using Big Ship, and the other one is using the Hound's Tooth. I think you could either use Hound's Tooth or Bigs, but for in this video, I'm just going to use Big Ship because I just really like the idea of uh, all Rebels. It's a lot of fun. So we're gonna go into the arena and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up against a non-mirror match. We're gonna go up against Chimera and uh, Hound's Tooth and best team, basically the old meta. Actually, this team does very well. It can hold up, but um, my team is just so fast with all the additional turn meter uh, given by Biston ship. Now right here, this is what I like right now, is that I can actually use Big's special attack right here and I'll get a random ally to assist. And what I'm hoping is that I'll call in the Falcon. Plus I have a 50% chance that the Falcon's gonna assist anyways. Uh, this could be a quad hit. Okay. All right, we're gonna do maneuver and we're gonna do basic attack. Okay. And it's a possibility right here. We're gonna just blow the Hound's Tooth out of the water. Oh, we're getting close. We're gonna call in the Phantom for assist first. And I'm finding that most of the matches are done uh, after one reinforcement. Uh, it's just too good. Here we go, Phantom, here we go. Let's see if this is enough damage. Well, it's 50% chance we're gonna get an assist. No assist, okay. All right, well, we got through it. Uh, why don't we take out the Kylo Ren ship. Boom, it's gone. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I don't even need that right now. All right, all right, well, we did call an assist and we got a lot of choices here, but I, I can't tell you the number of times I never, don't even make it to this assist. Uh, and this is gonna be over right here. Yeah. Very simple, very powerful, and it's because of the turn meter. Now, I just want to talk for a minute about how uh, speed on ships is calculated when it relates to mods. And there is a very helpful tool on Crouching Rancor. I'm going to put the link in the description on crouchingrancor.com. 
uh, slash calculator ship speed. And it works a little differently than people realize. The actual mods don't matter. What does matter is whether they are five or six and level 15, of course. And actually, something that is very, very important is the number of gear pieces. So what I did is I plugged in my home one and I did all the star levels, the ability levels and all of that and the gear pieces at one. I could see I have a ship speed of 174. So if I put two six dot mods, I go up to 175 speed. And if I do four, five six dot mods, I will get 176 speed. And you can play with this. I can see that going all six dot mods does not give me the extra speed. And unfortunately, you know, putting all the extra gear pieces is what gives the ship the max speed. And this is in part why I'm frustrated with the ships and the ships mode is because uh, to get the most out of the ships, you really have to put six dot mods and gear up sometimes bad characters. And I don't have a problem doing that on ships like Millennium Falcon where the underlying characters, which is gonna be, you know, Chewie and Han, but when it means uh, putting you know, six dot mods and gear 12 plus characters on on characters like Biston. Oh, that just sounds absolutely terrible. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I should be putting those resources into my uh, Grand Arena teams or Territory War teams. Uh, and just look at this right here. We've got the Falcon. There's two characters on the Falcon. They have to go to gear 12. Then we've got Big Ship. There's one character there that has to go to gear 12. We've got the Home 1. That is a gear 12 Akbar. Then we've got Cassian's U-Wing, right? There's two more characters, and those are two characters that I feel are very, very useful, useless. I can't say useful. Then we got the Phantom right here, which has three characters, and I don't have a problem doing Ezra, but Sabine and Chopper, a little bit, you know, they're okay, they're good, but I don't want to take them gear 12 and gear 12 plus. And then so on, boy, Cassian's U-Wing, three characters. And so we've got a total just here on that last battle with two reinforcements, Akbar, two more for the Falcon, Biggs, Biston and the, the, the soldier. Then we got three more for the ghost. And then for Cassian's ship, that puts us at 12 gear 12 characters. And then if I did the last two ships, that would be a total of four more. We're talking about a total of 16 gear 12 characters and with six dot mods. It's just so much more than just putting five teams in your arena, uh, you know, with gear 12 characters and six dot mods. I mean, this could be up to 16 characters. Uh, and that's personally why I can't get into ships. It's just uh, gearing up and modding useless characters like Biston uh, is just not my idea of fun. Okay, I could get lucky here by hitting the Falcon. Let's just try it, that right here. Oh, look at that. Turn one. Falcon's gone. And that's why speed is so important. Look at that. Blew up the Falcon turn one. Yeah, that there, I could put this on autoplay now <laughs> because of the, the Falcon's gone. I don't even have to worry about this. I'm just going to focus down the Hound's Tooth. Um, all right, basic attack, clear away and all that. Then we're going to bring in um, the one reinforcement, and the batch should be done pretty quickly after that. Yeah. Let's do it this way. Phantom always seems like a good one because we're going to get a reinforcement right away. Big hit. Gone. Poof. You're done with. All right. Let's get rid of target lock. Basic attack for the win. And I don't know. Let's see. We're going to even get a reinforcement here. Nope. We don't even need the reinforcement. And that's typically how these go. So it's, it's a very solid... Uh, lineup right here, but I'm I'm afraid that uh, getting into Biston ship, you know, that's definitely into whale status right there. And um, let's go again. And if I were to make this mode better, I I wish it was just just the star level of the pilots uh, is all that mattered, not the gear in the mods of the underlying pilots would affect ships. I would just love this mode so much more if I could just star up the characters 
and put them in the ship and not have to worry about their gear and their mods, that would change the mode for me entirely. Okay, so having a, the fastest Bistin is probably just so important because look, take out the Falcon, turn one. It's amazing. All right, we're gonna go after Biggs because he's gonna get taunt anyways. Obliteration. Boy, we didn't even have to reinforce on that match there. So, Biston makes up the best team, making Falcon and Biston, in my opinion, with Biggs the best team right now in the current meta. And uh, I'm curious on what your thoughts are about ships. Uh, views are way down on ships videos, and so I'm guessing that there's a not a lot of interest in ships. I know prior to me getting the Falcon, sometimes I would just play my one ship battle a day, and on my personal account, I'm, I'm looking at my ships and I'm saying, my goodness, if I wanna take the Ghost and the Phantom up to max level, I'm gonna have to gear up at least six characters. I mean, have Ezra, so I have to gear up five characters. I'm just not looking forward to putting my best mods, six dot mods, and gearing up all these characters to be viable, nor Bistin. I, I don't like the underlying characters. So uh, maybe they need to change something. Maybe a raid would help. Um, I, I just some sort of feedback on this ship modes. Uh, put it down in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.